Hello and welcome back. I am BA from the Wheels in the Sky site and this is Astronomy for GAN Traders Series 2 Part 2 called Lunations. As you can see this is a new moon down here at 19 Cancer 24. This will occur on July 12th of 2010. That's what it looks like. The moon makes a revolution around the Earth averaging 27.212 days. The moon forms a conjunction in the sun, shown here, averaging 29.5306 days. This period is known as a lunation. And 235 lunations times 29.5306 equals 6,939.69, or 19 years. The phases of the moon will occur on the same calendar date, 19 years every 19 years known as the metonic cycle it's a repetition okay this is the new moon as I've shown you and we're, I'm going to show you the quarter moon in the quarter moon here the moon has passed the Sun is moved up to the first quarter shown here July 18th of 2010 here we've moved past the quarter and we're down to this opposition. This opposition is known as the full moon. The Earth would be right in here and the Sun shines its light on the moon and that's why you can see the entire moon uh, when it's a full moon. This is known as the last quarter. We've passed the opposition and we're coming back. This is when if you look up in the sky the moon is uh, only half illuminated this occurs on August 3rd 2010 okay so you've seen full new moons and and the quadratures here okay uh, some traders use new new and quarter moons in their trading they use this actually to time markets in their trading and some have actually systemized it uh, fantastically where they get really really good results so there are applications Enter Luther Jensen. Luther Jensen uh, worked for GAN from the early 1930s until GAN's death in 1955. Uh, he was um, uh, basically employed by GAN, I guess is the correct word to uh, describe their relationship. Uh, Luther Jensen lived in Kansas City, Missouri, and uh, we've got a lot of background information on uh, Luther Jensen. He he was a prolific writer. Unfortunately, a lot of his writings didn't survive. Uh, we have uh, most of the publicly available material at the Wheels in the Sky site. It's www.wheelsinthesky.com or visit, our, visit us at the Yahoo site, Wheels in the Sky, all one word. I'm going to be reading to you a little bit about what Jensen does with the moon because this is unique. And, you know, uh, some traders know about new and full moons and they, they look at them and they're trading and all that stuff. But others... Um, uh, there's other methods out there and we're going to talk about one uh, that uh, Jensen shows us okay uh, and I apologize for the quality of this it, it came to us in this quality uh, but uh, I will read it for you in, in the tracing of planetary internet interaction an adequate key is apparent incidentally there is sufficient evidence to show that the sunspot activity is caused directly by planetary interaction and therefore is an indicator secondary to planetary positions. For general purposes, the change in relationships within a 360 degree spectrum of Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus reflect cyclical timing indicators of economic ebb and flow. Okay, what that means is he, in, in his book, he uses Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus uh, to time uh, economic recessions and depressions and booms. The half circle we're continuing now. The half circle, or 180 degrees, reflects interpretations in the time factors appearing as in interruptions in the primary or major trend of the business index. Because of different differencing speeds around the 360 degree spectrum by Saturn, Uranus, and Jupiter, they are in conjunct at varying, varying intervals, Jupiter and Saturn every 20 years. Let's see, we talked about that in a, in a prior uh, segment of the uh, of this series. Let's continue. When the number of lunations, new moons, are added to the varying peaks of 180 degrees, 
90 degrees, 60 degrees, 45 and 30 degree angular relationships between the constantly varying positions of these major planets in relation to the Earth, timing elements become relatively precise. For 180 lunations is just short of 15 years, and 90 lunations about 7.5 years. For example, the beginning of another major downward cycle is assumed in stock market prices from the fall of 1929. Being downward, the 90, 45, 22 and a half, etc. lesser cycles apply. Upward major cycles are marked by 60, 30, 15, etc. time units. In tracing the trend since, we find that 90 months elapsed from the 1929 top to the 1937 high. Major lows to major highs hold in the same adequate average the summer of 1929 to early 1933 and from early 1933 to early 1937. Extending this cadence from the highs of 1937, one in February and the other in August, the projection results in another important low between late 1940 and early 1941 and another high 45 months later in 1944. Dividing the 45 month projection into further units of 22 and a half, 11 and a quarter, etc., a minor high is indicated early in 1942 and another low in 1943, all of them at succeedingly lower levels than the previous one. Inasmuch as the major, major cycle is downward for approximately 180 months from the 1929 highs, within one century of years are usually three major highs in economic activity relating to three 360 lunation epochs. In the past century these peaks occurred in 1837, 1864, and 1929, following a 13 to 15 year interval of declining statistical indices. The, the epoch that follows usually has been confined to narrow limits, dependent in extent on the all preceding highs in security prices and the 1920 highs surpassed all preceding commodity price highs. It is to be concluded that at least a period of two 180 degree lunation periods will be passed before comparable major highs will be in the prospect again. In other words, it being 30 years between the 1932 low point in commodities and 1962. It will be, la it will be the latter year before a long rise to heights comparable to 1864 or 1920 may be anticipated. Okay. He goes on here. I'll, uh, from the brief framework approaching the business cycle, offered here implications evolving projection of normal cadences refute cyclical major trend continues downward, as it has in the past decade with temporary interruptions. From 1929, its normal objective is, is a major low point, approximately, approximating 1943 followed by a minor high in 1944, coincident with a cyclically due upward swing of approximately 11, half, 11 and a half months, starting in the interval between late 1940 and 41. Okay, so what, what you're seeing here, and we read this again, or let me reemphasize this part again. For example, the beginning of another major downward cycle is assumed in stock market prices from the fall of 1929. Being downward, the 90, 45, 22 and a half, etc., lesser cycles apply. What did he mean by that? He means uh, those are known as the hard aspects. 90 divided by 2 is 45, divided by 2 is 22 and a half, etc. And so what what that is, is he, he means 90 lunations, 45 lunations, 22 and a half. He's taking major highs and lows and he's adding lunation periods to them, just like of the harmonics. Okay. Upward major cycles are marked by 60, 30, 15. Those are again half and half. 60 divided by 2 is 30 divided by 2 is 15, etc. Okay. And so you can see what he's doing. He's taking these major highs and lows and he's he's adding uh these lunation periods to it. Where do you go to get information like this? www.wheelsinthesky.com. We'll see you there.